Well, thank you very much. Uh, you guys might be used to the taller version of the magaws out here, but I have a pre—I have a genetic predisposition to silver, and at Reina Silver, we have a focus on going after high-grade, large-scale projects with the idea of that's how you can find something that will make money when silver is at your worst possible nightmare and big enough to survive multiple market cycles so that when silver goes to whatever your dreams are made of, you can party all night if you choose to do so. So that's the filter that we're using. Obviously, we're going to be making some forward-looking statements. It's important to do your homework on any investment that you make. So we think that we have three high-quality assets that have the potential for being those high-grade district-scale deposits that our geology team, our exceptional team of geologists and experts, have, me, have repeatedly had success finding. So my father, Dr. Peter McGaw, is our lead technical advisor, and our geologists, with their boots on the ground, Rene Ramirez and Manuel Ruiz, have also been successful with this style of exploration as well. And this is one of the reasons why we have the strong support from both our institutions, retail, and management definitely has skin in the game. And that's why we get to go drill on three projects. We have Gigi and Batapilis in Chihuahua and Medicine Springs in Nevada. Gigi is the other half of the Santo Elalia district. So you have a carbonate replacement deposit that produced half a billion ounces of silver. And from what we know studying CRDs worldwide, that comes from the distal portion. So where's the source? Where's the proximal starn? And can we find out how much bigger this system could be? Badapilis is Mexico's highest grade silver district. This was actually a native silver district. And what we've done is we've gone in there to a place where the Spanish were looking for gold. They found crazy high-grade silver, and they went, OK, I can settle for that. We come in as a silver exploration company, and not only have we found even more high-grade silver, but we also found gold for the first time in the district. So we are working to put together the pieces and understand the framework so that we can figure out how much bigger that deposit might be. And our third project is Medicine Springs. That's in Nevada. It's actually the reason why I got involved with Raina Silver. I was actually out there last weekend. And this is a system where we think we have the full carbonate replacement deposit continuum from porphyry all the way out to the distal portion of the system. Here's some of the guys that we've got on the team. Our geologists, Rene and Manuel, CEO Jorge Ramiro Manroy. And to get into the deposits, because that's really what we care about, uh, we're going to start with Batapilis so that we can keep the two CRDs together. Batapilis is a native silver district, historically. This is a place where they produced 300 million ounces of silver prior to 1912. I just have to take a moment to stop on this photo. That is one month's production in 1906. That's 350,000 ounces of fine silver. And what they did is they would chase these little skinny veins of silver mineralization. They balloon out over the course of a couple of meters into being three to five meters across, 30 to 80 meters on level, and they chased them down for hundreds of meters. In the 1850s, they came in below with a tunnel at river level to come in underneath. Well, it turns out they kept going. Uh, the mine flooded in 1912. The claims broke up. We were able to put it back together, and that allows us to explore this on a bigger scale. So what we did is we said, this is the historic district. We know there's high-grade silver there. What is out here? We followed structures up into the northeast. We did a trenching program that came back with samples running 305 grams to 42 kilo silver, as well as for the first time, gold. We then went drilling out there, and what we discovered is not only a continuation of high-grade silver mineralization, but a gold zone has developed up in the northeast of the historic district. And we're not talking a little bit of gold. This is at 42A, three and a half, over three and a half meters of over eight grams per ton gold. So this is a new element in the district. We felt it was important to figure out how this fits in the overall framework. So we put a pause on our 10,000 meter program 
And right now we're doing our boots on the ground work, geochem, geophysics, and a structural survey so that we can understand how this new element fits in. Uh, this here is our recent sampling survey just to get you a general idea of what something like that's doing for us. Here's the Teodoro gold zone that we discovered through drilling. Two kilometers away, we're now also seeing gold mineralization southeast of the historic district, as well as extending historic veins by 300 to 1,200 meters, and also discovering three new silver veins. So we have this element where we've got gold mineralization and silver mineralization, and they're actually using the same structures. Uh, they're not temporally the same. We think that's probably relative to two mineralizing events. But what this provides us with the opportunity to do is leverage that gold mineralization to find more silver mineralization and vice versa. Here's a little general idea of there's a silver mineralization, visible silver, and gold. Moving on to the CRDs, people are familiar with these carbonate replacement deposits. You get an intrusion coming in, mineralizing acidic fluid, interacting with your limestone. It goes up through the structures. You get that paper mache volcano vinegar baking soda reaction, you get porosity, the pH changes, the goodies drop out, and this happens over and over again. And the longer the system lives, the more phases of mineralization, the larger the deposit, the higher the grade. So at Santo Eulalia, you have a district that produced half a billion ounces of silver with better parts of 15% lead and zinc, as the saying goes, the best place to find a mine is in the shadow of a head frame. And from what we know studying CRDs, that half a billion ounces of silver came from the distal portion of the system. So that's out here. Our question is what's hiding underneath the volcanic cover? Oh, my blood sugar is going low. Um, what's hiding underneath the volcanic cover? We believe that's potentially the source of the system. And what we've done is gone drilling at hole 28, we found an intrusion that we had never seen before. It's been replaced by a sulfide scar mineralization. We're district scale explorers, so we decided to take big step outs. We went 650 meters to the north, 770 meters to the northeast, and over a kilometer out to the east. All four of those intersected mineralization, giving us half a square kilometer of scar mineralization at depth. Sitting on top of that is 1,200 meters of some of the most productive limestone in history. I mean, that's what's hosting the Santo Elalia district. And one of the things we're excited about is this spring, we identified these upper level feeder bleeder structures. So this is what's used in CRD exploration to vector your way back towards those ore bodies that make CRDs such an attractive deposit type. So what we're doing right now is a geophysics study so that we can identify, hopefully, the ability to do holes where you do a two for one. So we're gonna be continuing to look for that source so we can peg down that end of the system, but as well as seeing if we can identify where potentially some of these additional upper level structures are. So that's where we're at with Gigi. And here's a little example of what the grades are looking like. That sample runs 512 grams per ton silver. All right, so Medicine Springs. Medicine Springs is in Nevada. This is a carbonate replacement deposit, we believe. And we think here we actually have the full intact system. So unlike at Gigi, where you've got half a billion ounces of silver that has been taken out of the Santo Eulalia district, at Medicine Springs, we think that we have the full system from the source porphyry all the way out to the most distal portion. We were just out there this last weekend, actually. This was a project my dad and I looked at in 2020 and you're out there and you see these big ripping jasperoid structures, beautifully northeast control, and you see evidence of multiple stages of mineralization. Of the 13 features that we look for in large scale, high grade carbonate replacement deposits, we see 10 out of the 13 before our first drill hole. We're in an area with large scale copper porphyries we're at the very top of a carbonate sequence because it's a carbonate replacement deposit, so obviously you need carbonate to replace. Uh, the Gerster unit that we lie at the very top of because it gets upwards of 800 meters thick. And we're already seeing evidence of high grade mineralization with greater than 400 grams per ton silver. The rest of these features 
essentially are indicators of a long-lived multi-phased system that had the chance to get big. Because we have these jasperoids, they provide us a window to look in at what's going on at depth. And so what we did was a selective sampling survey. We put that out last winter. And what we see is what my father considers one of the best CRD jasperoid studies he's ever seen because we see absolutely exquisite copper, lead, zinc, and silver zonation. Our silver numbers are coming back actually 400 to 1,200 grams per ton silver. And what we're identifying is that there's these main northeast structures that are the jasperoids, and then there's these more nuanced northwest structures uh, that are typified by fugitive calcite veins. And when those intersect, the grade goes way up. We're going to be starting drilling there next week. And our first hole will be focused here at the Golden Pipe. The idea being, let's check off a couple of the things that we need for this thing to get big. So we're going to be doing a deep hole, because no one's ever accused my father of drilling shallow holes. And the idea here is that we're going to be identifying if we've got the stratigraphy that we need. So let's figure out what we're dealing with in terms of our limestone package. We're going to be going underneath two of our best jasperoid structures, as well as underneath the Golden Pipe which is the historic district to see what our oxidation level is, and terminating in a geophysic anomaly that we see out here in the west. So try to check off as many things as we can, and then figure out which one of the four key targets that we've developed should be our next drill hole. So looking forward to seeing what comes out of there. I'm trying to not get too excited, but I really like this project. So capital structure, we've got 116 million shares outstanding. Current market cap is uh, 36 million. And we have around 7 million in the bank, in the war chest, so that we can go drilling. We have three projects that have the legs to be something big, that have the legs to be something high grade. Right now, we're focusing on Medicine Springs and seeing whether or not we've got another big project on our hands, and then doing the boots on the ground work during this, uh, during this market so that we can really have defined, strategic, disciplined uh, drill holes. So there we go. Any questions? We have a couple of minutes. Fantastic. I have a quick one. So on the three, I think you're doing three drill programs there. Yep. Are you fully financed for all of them and you've got all the permits? So we have our permits for Medicine Springs. We start drilling next week. We're focusing on that initial 4,000 meters. This is the planned uh, goal amount of drilling for this upcoming calendar year. We could drill at all three projects this year, but right now we're identifying how we can be the most strategic in terms of how we deal with our drilling meters. Thanks. Any other questions? Comment, concern, joke, all of the above. Yeah, great presentation, and thanks a lot. Thank you.